Many of us are trying to find ways to build a more sustainable world for future generations. We're concerned that our planet's well-being isn't as secure as it once seemed. But on every continent, there are new environmentalists who are committed to change. Whether it's an individual, a small group, or a grassroots organization, they've made personal sacrifices that most of us couldn't even imagine. This whole area was targeted by the gas drillers before people really knew what fracking was all about. And it was sold as a patriotic thing to do. Tengo coraje en defender. My anger motivated me to defend my people. If the government has given us these legal rights, then it's up to us to apply the law. We implemented a blockade to prevent Medvedev's villa from being built. This showed the public that the very people responsible for creating these laws were the first to violate them. The new environmentalists, ordinary people affecting extraordinary change. David and I met when we were both corporate attorneys working in a large Boston law firm. We moved out to Ithaca and we fell in love with the area. Upstate New York is at the crossroads of natural beauty and history that stretches back to the Revolutionary War. But today, due to the area's massive shale deposits, it's now at the epicenter in a battle against fracking. This whole area was targeted by the gas drillers for leasing before people really knew what fracking was all about. And it was sold as energy independence and the patriotic thing to do. So there were a lot of people that signed up. I was one of those unfortunate people who signed a gas lease. I felt backed into a corner. The first well would have been two miles down the road. The truck traffic, the pollution, everything would have visited this farm. I've been here for close to 30 years. It's really important to me that the land stay clean and unpolluted. For it to be even marginally economically productive, you have to drill a very, very large number of wells. You're pumping that rock down there. Or you're fracturing the rock above it. You're fracturing the rock below it. Every one of those holes is an environmental risk. It's not just gas. There are other things down there, heavy metals, radioactive material, methane, other hydrocarbons. For us to say there won't be any repercussions is absurd. And that was just something I couldn't imagine happening here in Ithaca. So shortly thereafter, horror turned to resolve and David and I decided that we were gonna stay here and we were gonna fight, we were gonna find a way to do it, we weren't gonna stop. And that comes from having a corporate law background. So we started looking at what sort of local land use laws could a town use against drilling. And the consensus was that local governments were powerless. But while you couldn't regulate the industry, you could simply say no. During their extensive research, Helen and David Slotje discovered a legal solution called Home Rule. This right to ban fracking came out of the state constitution, and this was an incredible power for local communities, and one that local communities around the state have been rallying around as their only opportunity to protect themselves. So they began a petitioning drive, and communities from all across the state wanted to know, how do you do this? We spent thousands of hours working for free for these towns. As a result, there's over 200 communities that have taken action to use their home rule authority to protect their towns. But Helen's efforts did not come without risk. The industry members would ridicule us. They would follow us out to our cars at night to convince us that we needed to stop. We weren't gonna stop. I welcome them to sue me. She changed the paradigm of human interaction with the oil and gas industry. As citizens, we have the right to say no 